Welcome to the episode one of Heavy in the Paint. I'm Gerald Brown, uh, host of the Bottom Line Sports Show, and my other host, my brother from another mother. I only claim him on Saturdays on Sirius XM NBA Radio. Bad Boy, the original Bad Boy NBA champion, Rick Vaughn. Hey, listen, I ain't your brother. I'm going to insult you from even being on the radio, off the radio. If I see you in the street, I'm punching you in your stomach. You know you lie. You know yeah, you lie. That's why this show is called Heavy in the Paint. Well, you, you know what? That ain't because of that. I weigh, I weigh I'll less show you how I feel. I weigh less than you. I weigh less than you. I I weigh less you. Look at you. What, yeah, yeah. what you going to understand, people, about this show? going to give you a weekly rundown of some of the biggest topics. Instead of just in basketball, we're expanding our nation because, again, we're avid sports fans, and we got the NFL season right around the corner. And, Rick, before we get started, the big news came out about Mr. Kelsey from the Kansas City Chiefs in terms of his uh, knee and stuff like that, hyperextended it. I'm thinking Jason Kelsey. I don't know why, but Jason Kelsey is his brother and stuff like that. <laughs> <laughs> Good mistakes on the first show. I hear you, G. I hear you. You, tra- you mean Travis Kelsey? Travis Kelsey. I don't know why I kept saying Jason, but Travis is the one. Travis Kelsey. You <laughs> hey, see- well, <laughs> what's, cool, what's cool about the league is when you get a bunch of brothers in there that all got different. You just call them, you know, Kelsey. One of the Kelsey brothers. One of the what Curry about? brothers. One of the brothers. One of the Arthur Cooper brothers. You know, you, you get they get so caught up sometimes. But, you know, G, it, it, it's, it's – Football, man, it, it's it's because it used to be where guys would get hurt, and you go, okay, is that something that they can recover quickly with t- technology that's going on now? I think it's something. Hey, he probably needs a break. Sometimes you need a break, man. You know, it's overlapping. Sometimes if you go all the way to win a Super Bowl, then you party hard for about a month and a half, like like Gronk or something like that. It's like okay. We'll catch up on you. But, hey, when you get older, things happen. And this is something that do you, does Kansas City have that trustworthy, uh, you know, that trustworthy uh, tight end that they, you know, that they can rely on? Or what's the next guy? Who's the next guy in line? But when you have a system like the Kansas City Chiefs, it's always someone there the same way with the New England Patriots back in the day. One, one man goes down. The main man is Patrick Mahomes. So that's who you don't even you don't think about it, but that's the one, that's the that's the straw that stirs the drink. Well, you know what concerns me about this, and you know, it's interesting because again, your connection to the Detroit Pistons through and through, you're part of the community in the city of Detroit. You know, the Lions have that first game, and I always say that there's so many intriguing storylines, and Rick, there's about four of them that, you know what, I want to hit you with this week in terms of, and also every week, we're going to go through a lot of the NFL, some of the big storylines, and break it down from, again, fans' perspective and a former and a, a former NBA player's perspective. So we That want, loves football. That loves football. <laughs> we, talk, we talk NBA, but we talk football on the NBA channel. Oh, so at okay. the end of the day, that's what we do, but... Rick, you're in Detroit. It was a lot of buzz about the way they ended the season. The Lions, a lot of people caught wind, and everybody's pulling for them. Aaron Rodgers is out of the division now. You have this division so-called up for grabs. And look, the NFL rewarded them and put them on center stage, national television, to open up the season. Now this news about Travis Kelsey. How big of a game is this for the Lions to make everybody believe that they are the real deal. This is a statement game. Win or lose, you're getting prime time. One thing that the Lions have never really gotten because of their records, of because because when Barry Sanders retired, you got uh, Matthew Stafford going out to L.A. winning a, a Super Bowl with the Rams. It gets to the point sometimes enough is enough. And now it's either put up, Dan Campbell has this team, really focusing in on how to be a playoff team. And the thing is, don't count for Super Bowl wins right now. Account for winning your first playoff game. And that's the thing that you have. That's encouraging because with with Aaron Rodgers out of the division, still it is up for grabs, but that makes it tough and competitive for the Chicago Bears and also with the Minnesota Vikings. 
is still, I mean, the Vikings were playing pretty good football last year, but Detroit ended the year playing really well. Just unfortunately, they didn't make the playoffs. So those are the things that you look at. And they gave, they, they got them predicted to win, you know, they, uh, they, the odds of them winning a, uh, a championship trophy, like 20, I think it's 22 to 1 or something like that. But that's good and encouraging, barring injuries. Barring injuries, I think that it's going to be intriguing. The whole NFC is going to be intriguing to me, not only just that black and blue division, but all across there. I mean, everybody's picking the Philadelphia Eagles to go back to the Super Bowl it, well, you know, with, with Hurts. And, and everybody, it, it's, it's up for grabs. And that's the fun about professional sports. You can't predict it, predict it, but it's just fun that it's a buzz here in Detroit and everybody, all the Lions, are looking forward, or all the Lions fans are looking forward to, forward to them to finally get out of that hole. Yeah, you know, I said that this is a must-win game because, again, it'll go a long way for establishing the credibility, especially when you've been a program and an organization that the highlight of each and every single season is hopefully you can play a relevant game on Thanksgiving Day. And now you open it up the season. It's a reward for the way they finish the season. But I look at this game with as – Is it a reward? You play in the well, – You know <laughs> what? It's a champion. reward. It's kind of like, you know what? Put up or shut up. Were you real or were you fake last year and mm. what you were able to accomplish? And now this is an opportunity. I think that, look, if they win a close game – I think this goes a long way to build the energy and enthusiasm with that fan base. If they go out there and let's say they stomp the Kansas City Chiefs, I think a lot of people will feel that, you know what, it was a fluke and and, and it's still a lot to prove. Would you agree or disagree that they have to win this game and be in a sense to establish themselves, they got to win convincingly? Or is it a situation where, you know, if they just show up and play – is there some type of uh, sentimental vic- victories and stuff like that? No, it's no sentimental victory when you when you're playing against the champs. The thing is, champs got a bullseye on their back, and that means you're gonna bring your A game. My thing is, yeah, you want to be competitive, and hey, if you beat them, that's good. But don't keep read, don't read the clippings because the following week, people are gonna look at you differently as well. So you beat Kansas City. Let's see how we can you know, compete against you. I don't know who would, what's their next game after this, but you got to figure they got 10 days because they play on Thursday and they got 10 days before they play their next game. So my thing as they could, if they compete, you know, your level of uh, competition, you want to compete, but if you, if you get the win, it could be something where people say, well, Oh, that's a fluke win, you know, if you're the outliers. But if you're if you're the people that are in that locker room, no, you got to be confident enough to say, hey, you're here as a, as a champion or not a champion. You're here. I'm going to be right. You know, we got to we got to make sure we take care of business. That's all it has to, to me. That's the adjustment to me. If, if the Lions are going to be for real or they're going to be fakes. Well, stick staying with that. Who's real and who's fake? The New York Jets are in that same situation. They open up at home. They got every little shiny tour that they wanted under the Christmas tree for the first time, arguably, since Joe Willie Namath was the franchise quarterback. They have a franchise quarterback in Aaron Rodgers. We've witnessed the trend of quarterbacks that have established themselves elsewhere coming to a new team and taking that team to a Super Bowl. Aaron Rodgers is now in New York. They're playing the Buffalo Bills. That first game out the gate is a very, very important one, Rick, because, again, it established the fact is that the Jets are for real. Agree or disagree? Uh, You know what? I would agree with that if they're they're for real. They do have an MVP quarterback. They do have a Super Bowl quarterback. But I remember a Super Bowl quarterback went there and also an MVP in Brett Favre. And they did make the playoffs. And and they did do some things in that division, but Tom Brady was there. Now, with the Buffalo Bills, last year, a lot of things, uh, the Harlan accident, them, have, them having to play on the road, a lot of emotions were there. Now, with coming back, man, I just see the Bills just, you know, like a wrecking ball because they got a lot to prove. They got a lot to prove from last year to say, hey, the emotions got us. We're a young ball club. 
and we got to make sure that we get back. And when you say get back, yeah. <laughs> you, you, you got to get back to that, that to that potential as a football team to say, you know what, you know, we won the division, but yet Miami's there. Everybody's not looking around at Miami with Tua down there, the quarterback. And then you go, okay, or you got the Jets, and you know what? You may sleep on my my Patriots, which I I I, I don't know is Matt Jones going to come in there and you know learn from the mistakes from last year, and if they improve that offensive line, they did get uh, Dak Prescott as a running back, but you know he's kind of, I mean Zeke Elliott. And he's kind of long in the tooth, but that's nothing for a running back that can come there with that experience. But Belichick is always the Wizard of Oz. You always want to, you always wonder how can he manipulate it. But the AFC is stacked with all these great quarterbacks. Yeah, it, it definitely is. And I think if anything, listen, you know the Jets have been down because I put them kind of in that same boat with the with the Lions. The Lions. They've been down so long, and this is a. I mean, the fan base has been bananas, and it's like you know what? It's not even more so about making the playoffs. It's getting to the Super Bowl, and you're right. They got a tough, tough sledding. But I think at the end of the day, the confidence with this team is very, very high. And you open up on national television, also in a Monday night game at home. It's going to be really, really huge. As we talk about the NFL in week one and some of the interesting storylines that stand out. Another one, Rick, is out in the West. And I say the AFC West is a division now, depending on how this, this Travis Kelsey injury shakes out with the hyperextended knee. And obviously him being that safety valve for Patrick Mahomes. You have Las Vegas taking on the Denver Broncos. The Broncos, I think, arguably, Rick, is the team with the most pressure on them because they have a new coach that comes in there and Sean Payton, who's coming in there, and he's supposed to be the Superman to rescue the team and this organization. You pay Russell Wilson a ton of money. He didn't deliver last year. And at the same time, you know, Sean Payton came out and said some things about the previous head coach, Nathaniel Hackett, that was unfavorable. And then on the flip side, you look at the Raiders. Jimmy Garoppolo is there replacing Derek Carr. Josh Jacobs didn't get his long-term deal. It's the it's the Raiders. And now with this injury, it seems like it is a possibility, just a possibility. You can't afford to lose this game in this divisional game right here, knowing that the Kansas City Chiefs are the Kansas City Chiefs. Agree or disagree, would you think that the Broncos have the most pressure out of all of the teams in the NFL going into week one? You know what? I believe they do, G. You know, when I look at that team and saying that, okay, we get rid of the quarterback, we get rid of the coach, uh, you know, no, we get a new quarter. You give Russell uh, Wilson the money to be that franchise quarterback, but yet you get a, you get rid of the coach. Now it, the pressure comes back on the team. It's no pressure on Sean Payton because he will get paid. But he will, he is a Super Bowl winning coach. It's, it's going to be his way, even though those unfavorable things that he said about the previous coach, that's, that's just, you know, somebody was listening and had a hot mic somewhere. And, you know, Gerald, sometimes we get on, we get on radio, we get around and people have a hot mic and they want to take that and blow it up. Why not? I mean, Sean Payton is a, hey, he's a proven winner. He, he He's not going to have Drew Brees in the backfield, but he, I mean, as, as his quarterback, but he has a quarterback in Garoppolo who, when he was with New England, I mean, Russell Wilson, when he was in Seattle, he is a Super Bowl winning quarterback. Now the, the, the pressure comes on him because he's the face of the franchise right now. Can they do it in that West? No, I don't just, I don't think so. It's so, it's going to be so tough. But, but one thing that I know about Kansas City, man, they, they, they got the man. They got somebody that's going to make somebody else look good and get paid. He definitely is a guy. And I, I, I think clearly, look, this is a vision where we're not even talking about the San, uh, San Diego Chargers, the L.A. Chargers, you know, with, with Justin Herbert. You have a lot of good quarterback play. And at the end of the day, I always think that it's kind of, in a sense, opening a season up for teams that have to play divisional games, especially mm -hmm. in the AFC East and in the AFC West, because the loser of those specific games, divisional games, where you're already back one in a divisional game, and honestly, if you're in that, that AFC West, 
depending on what Kansas City does on Thursday night, right, and you have that situation there, you do not want to be in a situation where you fall too far behind because I guess the main, the main thinking is hopefully we can get two teams out of our division for the playoffs. And that's the same thing with the AFC East where you have, like you mentioned, you have Miami, you have Buffalo, you have the Jets, and then, oh, by the way, you have the New England Patriots. So at least you're trying to get at least two teams out of that division, the East situation. And we haven't even talked about the AFC, uh, the AFC North, which is mm. very, very strong. And I agree with you. It, it, it's going to be a top, top heavy league moving forward. I want to get your thoughts on this in terms of the Jet, I mean, the Giants and the Cowboys. And that matchup is, again, a divisional matchup. And you look at the situation where the running back, Saquon Barkley, didn't get it. He, he didn't get the contract he wanted. He didn't Daniel, get the bag. He didn't get the bag. Daniel Jones got his contract. But the Giants, although they made it to the playoffs last year, uh, got a playoff win. But now you're in a situation where you haven't beaten the Cowboys, Rick. And if this is going to be a situation where you know Philadelphia is there, and Philadelphia with Jalen Hurts, very, very strong, adding DeAndre Swift to that backfield, if you're in this situation, is this a must win for the Giants to kind of prove themselves that you can beat the big bad Cowboys who have really been basically on everybody's mind? They talk about them, but yet they have yet to show up when the, when it can't when it becomes money time. Let is me this tell you about, a let me tell you, about it. It, you know, is this a must win for the Cowboys or is it a must win for I say the Giants because the Giants, the Giants haven't it? beaten them. Well, and 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 then again, I go like this: when you got you when you had the Redskins in your division, and you have the Giants. Commanders, and, it was Redskins. I mean, excuse Command. me, the, the Commanders. Command. I'm sorry, I'm old. I'm no, you're old. not. It takes a, it takes a minute you're to foolish, get better. But you ain't old. Yeah, no, I'm sorry. <laughs> the Commanders, and who else is in that division with them? You um, got the Cowboys, Eagles, and Giants. Okay, I look at the Giants as a one-hit wonder. Because wow. they've been, you know, since since Lawrence Taylor, LT, and that crew with with Manning and and the quarterbacks and the running backs and and also the the wide receivers, I just think that you know they're in a weak division, and we look at that we look at that division all the time. I look at it as like who is the Commanders going to win it, or is the the Eagles just blew blew everybody away with it? So I still think this is the Eagles division. When I look at the Giants, I'm saying, okay, they're, they're catching the scraps. And I look at Dallas, who's always in the paper with BS all the time, not barbershop talk, but with B, BS. <laughs> and it's like, okay, McCarthy is taking over the reins of the offensive side for 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 the Cowboys. And so maybe that's going to help them, but they still got the same people, the same place, the same time. I mean, it's not like they made a big splash of, of acquiring any big any any huge people but they do have a so they do have a a very good defense yeah I, look i think the giants they have to prove themselves and i think clearly i think if they win this game rick and i'll ask you this could they be the surprise team of the nfc because there's going to be a surprise team like last year nobody expected the Eagles to do what they did, but let's say on a lower level, nobody expected the Detroit Lions to do what they did and run the table. And arguably, they should have been in the playoffs with that bad call uh, in the Seattle Rams game at the end of the year. And then they go mm -hmm. in the Phil in Aaron Rodgers' uh, run as Green Bay Packers quarterback. But you always have one team sleeper, it's the sleeper that's based on the schedule and things mm -hmm. of that nature. But I think right now, for a confidence booster, the same way for the Detroit Lions, the same way for the Jets, the same way for the uh, New York Giants, this is a confidence booster game if they beat the Dallas Cowboys. And if they beat them, I think it sets up for a pretty surprising season for them. But when yeah. you look at season, wait, well, no, go ahead. No, you go ahead. Well, what I was going to say is when you look at this season and so many of the storylines, which is which one that really, really stands out to you or a team that you're looking at and saying, hey, I, I want to see what they can do this upcoming season. 
it's got to be the Pittsburgh Steelers to me, mm-hmm. as much as I can't stand the Pittsburgh Steelers family and friends or doggone fans. But I just think this year between them and maybe the Cleveland Browns, mm-hmm. I'm looking at those two teams in the AFC doing some things, be, and not necessarily be a – Cleveland would be more of a surprise. But, you know, Pittsburgh has this pedigree about them. And I love the way Mike Tomlin, he brings it out of every player to come to play every day and making sure that they're responsible for their job. I look at that team. And then, you know what, I may, I have to look in the NFC because like it's not quarterback heavy, but then you got to look at people who might want to have a resurgence with their, with their career. And I'm looking at them Carolina Panthers. Oh. Ah, I, you know, for some reason, I just think new, new look, new, new, new team, you know, new, new feeling coming into this year because they ain't got nothing to lose. And that's the thing that you have to have as a team. You don't have anything to lose if you play your best. Yeah. I'm looking at two teams and I'm going to stay in that uh, AFC North. I'm going to say this. Yeah, the dogs out. That's what we bring out, the dogs. I'm going to say the Cincinnati Bengals because I think the window of opportunity is now because look guys are coming up the end of their rookie deals joe burrow is going to be looking to get paid jamar chase is going to be looking to get paid t higgins is going to be looking to get paid and this is pretty much the opportunity to sip step up and if they have to the last opportunity to do it together and i think clearly that division has gotten better lamar jackson has odell beckham jr hopefully those guys stay healthy and you're right the pittsburgh steelers are the pittsburgh steelers then the other team I call them, you know, there. It's always a but that's attached to their name, and that being the San Francisco 49ers. You know, they, the AFC, the NFC West has been their division, but Brock Purdy gets hurt. Jimmy, Garopp- Jimmy Garoppolo has gotten hurt. They've always been on the cusp, and they look good, but and they traded a quarterback too. Right, they traded Trey Lance, Lance. moved on from him. But I'm going to be watching them, but simply because. Look, Brock Purdy played unbelievable last year. And I think the end of the day, it's going to look back and say, okay, he did phenomenal last year. He's earned this uh, earned this opportunity to be the starter. But was last year a fluke or is, is he the real deal? So it's always been a but recently that's been attached to the San Francisco 49ers. And it's going to be a lot even more interesting depending on how this situation shakes out with Nick Bosa on the defensive end who's holding out for a contract. And it's interesting because Mike Tomlin of the uh, Pittsburgh Steelers, who are playing the San Francisco 49ers, indicated they are going to prepare as if play will be there. Uh, and mm-hmm. so those are the teams and stuff like that. Rick, we're going to be doing a lot of things with this show. We're going to be having some fun. We're going to be diving into a lot of things that we don't get a chance to do on our show on Saturdays on SiriusXM. So this is where we got the opportunity to unbutton our shirts. Go oh, ahead. You got on a button up shirt? I uh, no, I, I, I left my head down. We're gonna have guests. I, I thought you had a turtleneck. No, I don't have no turtleneck on. I ain't got you turtle. I'm, I'm borrowing yours, but let's go through some games real quick, Rick. And we're mm-hmm. gonna get our music checked out. We're gonna get all of that stuff squared away. But go through some games. I want to get your picks. Let's start off with the Lions at the Kansas City Chiefs. The Cinderella possible team in the Lions, they're up playing the Kansas City Chiefs. We don't know that hyperextended knee. I doubt very seriously that Travis Kelsey would be out there. Rick, I'm gonna go ahead and give this game to the Detroit Lions or the field goal. No, I'm. I, I, I'd have to revisit that one. I mean, but I have to give it to Kansas City because one thing that they've done in the past is that when they lost the Super Bowl or when they lost a playoff game before to get to the Super Bowl when they lost to Cincinnati, Cincinnati, they. This is what. This team, if you're a championship team, you don't want to have any any kind of sleep a slippage, uh, trip the fan, the turkey, and all that stuff. You the, the celebration is over. It's coming. To, this it's coming to work. They got to go to work to, to repeat as champions. They'll they'll be that team to come there, knowing that Kelsey's not there, so it's the next man up mentality. But that that dog on Patrick Mc, McHolmes, man. I gotta go with him. I, I mean, even with the bad ankle he had during the Super Bowl, I had I have to go with him. Well, Eric Bieniemy, 
the offensive coordinator, longtime offensive coordinator, is no longer there. So really be interesting to see how that plays out. I mean, so many things were said that he really didn't have a hand in the offense, but uh, definitely be really interested to see how that goes. Let's go through some of these games real quickly. Carolina at Atlanta. You have young quarterbacks, Bryce Young, the uh, top quarterback for the uh, in the NFL draft this past year, playing for the Carolina Panthers. I'm going to take the Atlanta. I'm going to take the Atlanta Falcons in this. You know, they got a second year quarterback in Desmond Ritter, Bajan Robinson, and 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 they got some uh, Kyle Pitts, the stud tight end. I'm going to go with the Atlanta Atlanta Falcons in uh, mm-hmm. Atlanta in that game. Who do you like? I'm, I like to go in Atlanta as well. You named off the three three particular people that will do some damage. And plus, hey, look, rookies go through their schedule. I mean, they go through their ups and downs, their bumps. I got to go with the Atlanta, Atlanta, Atlanta Falcons. I said I did, what, I did. I did the same. I did that just for you. So, you know, I have to say Cincinnati at Cleveland, the battle of Ohio. Cleveland has played the Bengals very tough. Deshaun Watson, he's been very, very rusty. I'm going to take the Bengals because at the end of the day, again, you're in that division, Rick. Divisional games are very, very crucial if you have an opportunity to make the playoffs. I'm going to go with the Bengals. Um, I'm going to go with the Cleveland Browns. I'm going with that dog pound. I just think Watson last year was a little rusty. And, you know, being sitting out that long period of time, he's going to get it back. This year is get back. Get he's back. Gonna get he's going to get it, G. He's going to get it. So I think the, the dog pound going to win that game. Jacksonville, Indianapolis. I'm taking Jacksonville. Indianapolis is a mess. Uh, you know what, Jonathan Taylor? Pay the man. I'm taking Jacksonville. No, I'll take Jacksonville as well. I, I tell you, they, they, they for, for some reason, that team's got a lot of spunk. You know what I mean? It's like, hey, we're just going to go play and have a good time, and let's see what happens. Well, they also have Travis Etienne back. You also have Calvin Ridley back, wide mm-hmm. receiver. And you know what, Trevor Lawrence? has gotten a lot comfortable, more comfortable with Doug Peterson, their head coach, and his offense. I like them, and I think that they're really, really set up to take control of that division this year. Uh, Tennessee, uh, Tampa Bay at Minnesota. Boo, Tampa Bay. Watch I'm your mouth. Minnesota. I'm taking I'm Tampa taking, Bay. I'm taking Minnesota. No, my, you don't even start talking about Tampa Bay. My, no, we, we're in the your table. Heart? You're going with your heart? No. You're going with – with stats. Well, we, I want to make sure first and foremost, pay the man Mike Williams. Let him re- let him retire as a Tampa Bay Buccaneer. He's issued a deadline of week one. He got to have his deal in place. Fingers and toes across. Pay the man. See there you go. Uh, Tennessee at New Orleans. <laughs> I, I, I mean Derek Carr and stuff. Uh, again, Tennessee. Ryan Tannehill. You got. You got the stud wide receiver and DeAndre Hopkins, something that they haven't had in quite some time, a solid, proven number one wide receiver. I'm looking at the Tennessee Titans in that running game by Derrick Henry and having yeah. now – King fly. Henry, baby. You got to go with King Henry, man. It, it's nothing like that, but to have the addition of Hopkins who can can flat out run and, and make the pad, just – you now you got a two-headed monster. Okay. San Francisco at Pittsburgh – I'm going to say this is tough sledding going from the West Coast to the East. I like Pittsburgh. Usually they get there kind of early. Time doesn't really bother, you know, playing in the NBA didn't bother me. It didn't throw my clock off. I got to go with, uh, I, I got to go with San Francisco. I just think that, you know, this is that put up or shut up game. Well, we're going to find a lot out about Brock Purdy. Arizona at Washington. I, I'm taking Washington right here. You know, Eric bien me, they starting a, a, a rookie quarterback. And I, I, I'm I'm looking at also Arizona. Kyler Murray is out. It's a new uh, rookie coach there. I'm taking I'm taking, uh, Washington. The Commanders. The Commanders. Taking the Commanders. <laughs> I'm taking the Commanders, too. Maybe they can, uh, you, you know, you have to just make sure that they continue that running game. Is, and, and you know when you look at the way that the Cardinals played back in the past, without you know without Kyler Murray, it just doesn't look right. Well, we got a couple more minutes, so we're gonna go through these games even faster. Houston at Baltimore. I'm taking the Baltimore Ravens in that game. Who you take? Baltimore. Green Bay at Chicago. I think I'm gonna lean towards Green Bay on this one. Chicago. Las Vegas at Denver. I'm taking uh, the Raiders. 
I'm taking Denver. Anything Philly. against you. Philly at Denver at New England. I'm taking Philly. <laughs> I'm taking with my heart. I'm going with New England. Miami at the Chargers. I'm taking the Chargers. I'm taking Miami. Rams at the Seattle Seahawks. I'm taking the Seahawks. No, I'm taking the Rams. I can't stand James Edwards' team in Seattle. Bunch of bums. Pete Carroll, bunch of bums. I'm taking uh, Dallas at New York. I'm taking the Giants. Oh, yeah, of course. Yeah, of course. You're a Giants. See, you got a little Giants fan. No, I don't. I, I'll never pick Dallas. I'm going with the Giants, too. <laughs> G-men all the way. And the final game, Buffalo at New York. Uh, I'm taking the Jets, J E T S, Jets, Jets, Jets. I'm taking that Buffalo. I'm taking that Buffalo Mafia. Them boys gonna come in and get that. They gonna eat. They gonna eat. <laughs> uh, real quickly before we get out of here, Rick. Uh, the big news that again, Deion Sanders made that phenomenal debut with his team. They're in the top twenty-five. Will you think this start a trend of successful? athletes making the transition becoming head coaches and now that door will open up even furthermore well the thing is you know Dion, with it, the way that he got where he is especially having his sons there that's even better because now you know it you you groom some guys and then you went to that portal and got guys that really respect what you have done as a player so is this the new trend of getting former football players or former athletes that used to play at these colleges and, and have that, give them a stepping stone. This is great for, this is great for the former players that want to coach, especially in college and, and also shoot in, in the NFL, get that opportunity in prime time is doing this thing. So Rick, that about wraps up the first show. Uh, again, heavy in the paint. We got so much on tap. Any thoughts before we get on out of here? Yeah, when I get off this thing, I'm going to walk up there and punch you right in the side of your blind and got them big old goggles you got on. Put on some cool shades if you ever going to do a show. Let me see your shades. You know, if you wasn't shaving your mustache and putting that dye in your hair and stuff like that, it'll look well, real scary. You know, you know, whenever you get that knitted wool out of your hair, that you just knitted up on top of your head and your this hairline off. This hey, look, look. That ain't real. Look at your hairline. It went back there. You got you got some of them. <laughs> Goodbye, man. We out. Happy in the pain. Peace. Peace.